Um, we have a second special guest, actually, uh, joining us as well. Uh, Representative Scott Peters is with us uh, from California. Uh, sir, you're welcome to join me at the lectern and address the audience if you'd like. It's great to see you today. I like the green tie. Thank you, sir. Well, just to follow on that theme, I'm from San Diego, California, where it's 70 degrees and sunny today, and I did not stay where I was from. <laughs> Because uh, I came out here, I'm really excited to work on um, energy issues and the energy transformation that's happening here. I started out on the um, Armed Services Committee, but tried to get onto the Energy and Commerce Committee from the very beginning because I think that's um, this really a lot of exciting stuffs happening. Uh, if you look at um, Texas, Texas, the market for um, with the market for energy is the most perfect market. It really incentivizes the, the things that make economic sense to be built. Uh, what the market told us in Texas was that people want to build renewables. Something like 85% of the projects that came on for Texas before the IRA were renewables. And um, so it's coming. Uh, we put our thumb on the scale with the, um, the IRA. We, made, we provided even more incentives for renewables. Uh, and now um, we actually have a lot of work to do. First of all, we've got to figure out how to connect them all. So I'm working a lot on transmission. A lot of folks on this side of the Capitol um, on transmission as well, because um, we, we have on, on board um, enough projects to power 85% of the, uh, the economy with renewable energy. But if we don't build transmission to get solar energy, for instance, from places like Arizona and New Mexico to places like Detroit and Chicago, uh, we will lose, those projects won't get built. And we'll lose 80% of the climate benefits of the IRA if we don't get that transmission built. So. The first thing I'm asking to look at is, is transmission. How do we move this stuff around? How do we do interregional high voltage transmission in a way that's gonna provide the opportunity for renewables to get where they need to go? The other benefit of that, by the way, is um, the intermittency of renewables can be abated somewhat if you, have, if you can move them immediately. So you don't need to, to build as many batteries, which require critical minerals. Uh, it provides more reliability. I'm gonna tell you that we're gonna have, we're gonna face real crises this summer and this winter uh, in uh, like we saw in Texas, like we've seen a little bit in my state, uh, because we can't move um, energy from where it is to where it needs to be. And I'm really worried, in fact, right now about um, some of the temperatures we're seeing in, in Arizona and Texas and other places. Uh, we need transmission to help, to help deal with that. Um, and we want, we want things to be cost effective and transmission allows you to put a competition onto the grid by provide better, uh, better prices for consumers. So I'm working on that. We're gonna have supply chain issues. Um, critical minerals is one thing you've probably heard about, but the metal that it takes to build, uh, to build out um, uh, electric, electrical transmission, there are a lot of supply chain issues we're gonna have. We're gonna have workforce issues. We have to train up people to do this. So it's a big national project. Um, it's really important um, and I'm really committed to doing it. I appreciate um, you all doing some education for us. We all have a lot to learn. I think we're all very humble about that. Uh, and finally, one other thing I'll say is um, I'm really after permit reform. So I'm a Democrat. I practiced environmental, environmental law for 15 years before I went into public service, elected office. And I was frustrated often that it took so much time to get where we needed to go. In fact, you couldn't, sometimes you couldn't even get an answer from the agency we were looking for. And, I got to this, this phrase I used to say is no is the second best answer. If it's going to be no, just tell me no. But tell me now so I can go on to something else. Right? I'd rather hear yes. You can't tell me yes, tell me no. Don't just jerk me around. We've made some progress, I think, um, and I have to give some credit to the Republicans on this, in um, the, the debt ceiling deal. where We said, okay, we're, we're only going to take so much time for review. We're going to put a lead agency in charge within the federal government so they don't bounce things back and forth. Uh, and we've started to make that, that process more, um, more sensible. And I think not just for energy projects, but for anyone who's applying to the federal government for permission to do something, we ought to give that person a response. And I think that, that just makes sense. But I'm looking at um, how do we make these processes faster? Because um, the other thing we're up against is we're in a race against time. We've all, we've all said that climate change is a crisis, that we have 10 years to do so much and um, you know, only 30 years to do everything else. We have to triple the size of the electric grid in, in uh, 30 years. That means 
We have to build another grid. It took 150 years to build this grid. We have to do another one in 15 years and another one after that in 15 years. 200,000 miles of transmission lines in that period. And what, what, are, we, what are we building now? 1,800 a year. It takes 10 years to do a transmission line on average. We just did one from Wyoming to just approve one, uh, permitted one from Wyoming to California. 18 years it took. Now we'll construct it. You think that's how you win a race? I don't think so. And I would say that the environmental laws of the 1970s were built for the time. And the time, at the time, we were making a lot of mistakes. And we said, we got to play defense. So we put up laws that said, like the National Environmental Policy Act, that said, wait, before you approve anything, you have to think of the environmental impacts, think of the alternatives, and make sure that government is fully informed. And that, was, that made sense at the time. We're pretty good at that now. But now those reviews can take four years. Uh, litigation on, those, on that is common. Um, you'll, you may litigate the same exact facility or technology in one district court in California, another district court in Minnesota, and we have to rationalize that. We can't take this much time if, if we're really in a race uh, against um, the destruction of the planet, which I believe this is an existential, existential threat. So I want to say we, you know, we're, gonna, uh, we're all going to have to work hard on, on, on other, other issues with respect to geothermal. There's, there's nits to clean up there. There's nits to clean up on... Um, on all sorts of energy sources. Offshore wind, we have to learn a lot. But uh, ultimately, um, we have to do this faster, and I'd ask you to keep that in mind as well. Um, i got great partners in the Senate and in the House. I'm really looking forward to, to taking on this challenge. Because I'm from San Diego, California, I get on a plane to come to Washington, D.C. every week. I consider myself the most optimistic person <laughs> here because I, I really I love where I live, but this is where a real change happens. I'm honored to have this job. And look forward to working with you all and my colleagues to, to make sure we, we get this right, provide energy that's reliable, affordable, clean uh, to, to consumers, to Americans, and then export some pretty good technologies around the world so we can keep that dirty coal in the ground. So thanks for having me, and uh, if we could be helpful, please be in touch. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Pierce.